Hey guys, for some reason XSplit didn't record the first 8 minutes of Boots on the Ground yesterday. I don't know why it did that. It may have had something to do with it uh, almost crashing at the beginning. Luckily, Skype crashed and we had to start using Google Hangout instead. So, everything else with the recording is fine. It's just, we didn't have that first 8 minutes. So, welcome to Boots on the Ground, I guess. Enjoy. Oh, and uh, mature language ahead. Three, two, one. Welcome back to Boots on the Ground. Uh, we had a slight technical hiccup in that Skype is shit. Um, so, I think we're in the middle of Genzo explaining the voting system. Oh, well, something like that. It wasn't just the vote. Basically, because you asked um, uh, the, the purpose of the uh, CPM. And what, one of the main purposes is basically to set up a voting system for the um, uh, for CPM one. It is also to be pretty much uh, be like a, a beta version of the real CPM because, uh, well, the, the Eve developers they've been working with a CSM type thing for at least well eight years now. <laughs> and uh, well, for the, for the Shanghai dudes, it's pretty new. So it's the first time they've ever actually had some like a, a proper like interface thing. Like, uh, like like CPM, like CSM, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I do my job right, that's that's where I'll come into play is is helping to demonstrate to the Shanghai Studio that that we are actually useful and and worth uh, you know duplicating this experiment with uh, a, a player elected body instead of just you know uh, yeah. the people that CCP selected to do this. So um, yeah. I'll be trying to bring as much of the uh, the practice and the procedure and the sort of system that we've had going um, and refined, you know, with regards to stakeholdership and that sort of thing. Uh, we've uh, made progress on in CSM7 and hopefully bring as much of that into the CPM so that they don't have to go through seven or eight iterations to get to the point where they're as, as functional and effective as, as the CSM has become over the years. Yeah, uh, and not only that, um, CPM has already actually done um, made some steps and some progress uh, on those fronts. Uh, I think one of the biggest things that we've been able to do so far was uh, pushing uh, Planetary Conquest to release on the 14th rather than the 6th, so it's not coming out on patch day. Because uh, I think, personally, that, that would have been awful. In and my I'm, opinion, yeah. I, I think we should have gotten uh, all, all the toys they won and then yeah. Planetary Conquest. Yeah, in, in an ideal world, I would have liked to have seen... Uh, seen Every all of the um, content, you know, the weapons and the that toys. Sort of stuff. Yeah, that's what I mean, and, the toys. Yeah, and have that release on the sixth. That way, everyone can respec and you know get used to everything. But uh, I think it's uh, if that's not technically possible, that's fine. Um, this is At least better this way than we still get forty-eight hours. Yeah, you you still get forty. You still get some time, but respecing and doing planetary conquest at the same time would have been horrible. I think. And I'm glad it was changed. Yeah, our alliance are pretty much planning to have every single person on the team speak at the same time, and then saying, "Okay, go, go, go! Skill into this, skill into this, skill into this, up against this planet. Go, fuck, go!" It would have been a mess. Okay, I think that's everything as far as that. We've only got what ten minutes left of mittens, so, uh. EVR, we'll go EVR first. Ooh. Thoughts on EVR? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, uh, did it, 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 was it just me who managed to play with it? Because I know that a couple of you didn't. I got to play with it. There was a press preview. And, yeah. Uh, it was probably the most transcendent gaming experience I've ever had, actually. I mean, when, I, uh, when I grew up, uh, I started playing games like Civilization 1 on the GA screen. And, uh, you know, you read sci-fi books like Snow Crash or Neuromancer, and you sort of always wanted reality to catch up with the sci-fi novels. Yeah. And uh, finally with EVR, it really seemed like the, the fiction had become the reality, that you were actually inside the game. And all but, those attempts at laser tag and battle tech cards yeah. had sort of finally come to fruition. That's actually exactly the kind of impression I had. Because I remember reading, I think it was like a Goosebumps book several years ago about like some kid being trapped inside a virtual reality headset or something like that. And it was, it was, it was, I had like flashbacks to that when I was in there. I, I managed to have a go just after they finished setting and stuff. So like they, I, was, I was hovering around them for ages and they said, do you want to try it out? I was like, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> and 
I, I just like sat down and they said, okay, close your eyes and I opened them. And they had the heads on. I was like, holy shit. Where the hell, why the hell am I wearing a, a suit? This is, this is really surreal. <laughs> Being able yeah, to, you, you uh, look down. like, yeah, look down or look behind your yeah. cockpit and actually yeah. see the captain's chair behind you and, like, all the little details. I had expected, because it was supposed to be a tech demo, that oh, EVO yeah. would be, like, a, you know, the, the graphics would be rudimentary. And uh, instead, it was extremely advanced. It was very, very pretty. Yeah, and it I, only I, took seven weeks to build. I think my eyes were a bit... Bad or something because I've usually traditionally I've had quite good eyes compared to my family, but my I, everything things a little bit blurry for me. Um, I, I think my eyes have sight have gone worse over the years, but I couldn't fully understand everything that was going on. But the guys there said that they are going to bring bringing out a much higher resolution screen with the commercial version of the Oculus Rift, yeah. and um, and that's something I'm really really hope for and. Yeah. Because yeah, it was amazing. One. I mean, there's, there's no question. Like that is, uh, that's the next step in games. I, I absolutely agree. If they can make a dust version for the Oculus Rift, my brain would quite literally explode. I mean, if you, if you've seen the video of the Oculus Rift being used with an omnidirectional uh, treadmill and, um, and Team Fortress 2, I mean, that's just awesome. I haven't actually gotten a chance to see that video yet, but. Uh... Did anybody else here get a chance to play with it? I, I unfortunately was uh, did not get a chance to Ooh. use it myself. I was very sad. I came up to the the station right as they were packing it all up, and I put my my best sad face on, you know, that I didn't get a chance to try it. And uh, they obviously didn't couldn't run a whole new you know six versus six demo, but they did let me put on the goggles for like a minute and actually look around the cockpit, which is which is close enough. That's what I wanted to see was well, what it looked like, you know, with my own eyes, and and it was you know like like uh, Mitten said, it was it was it it, it blew, just blew my mind. You know, this is what I dreamed of. To to me, I. I I mean, I just think it would be awesome if, like, you know, they have, um, a lot of people have Oculus Rift dev kits now, you know. I think it would be cool if that was something that they put out there. So other people who happen to have Oculus Rifts can, like, play that game and kind of see, like, where the potential. Not it would only be a huge shame for that to go to waste. I mean, it's an amazing right marketing tool. If they bundled that with every Oculus Rift uh, production kit, it's just like a demo game you could kick the tires on. Then I think it would, uh, even though it's not actually integrated into Eve, I think you can see a lot of people come play Eve just because that game is such a great introduction. Yeah, I, I actually agree. I mean, it was strange because before a couple of weeks, I only really found out properly about the Oculus Rift like a couple of weeks before FanFest. And after looking at many, many videos, I was very, very tempted <laughs> uh, to buy a dev kit uh, just because. Absolutely. And, yeah. yeah, and then after. After FanFest, it took all of my willpower not to basically blow 300 quid to buy a Oculus Rift. <laughs> it's like, no, wait, they'll have a better one at launch. Like, they want one now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just like everything I'm hearing is positive about EVR. Oh, it was there's, dude. there's nothing negative to say about no. it. No, dude, if anything. And uh, you know the funny thing about it is, is that CCP when their when their devs are actually allowed to do things. I mean, one of the things that fascinated me about the company is the management reorg that John Lander, CCP Unifex, implemented. And uh, EVR exists because it was done in seven weeks of twenty percent time, which is a thing that many major software companies have. But CCP did not have that until uh, John Lander implemented it after he took over as. Uh, uh, executive producer in the Incarna aftermath, and so, you know, from a certain perspective, we have him to thank because of that game, and uh, hopefully CCP doesn't uh, go back to their old ways. Yeah, I mean, it, that, they were made, it, was, it is absolutely incredible. Um, it, I mean, I, I, I did actually talk to them about about telling them that if, uh, if they made a dust version, my mind would quite literally explode. And they simply said that, well, <laughs> you know, it's made with, and dust is made with Unreal Engine, which has, of course, works very beautifully with the, um, uh, with the, um, the Oculus Rift. So seeing an, an Oculus Rift version of, of dust is certainly not impossible. Well, I think that they already have versions of it for uh, Skyrim and Fallout, so I mean, definitely that kind of game um, should be technically useful. Mm -hmm. 
I have, yeah. to excuse, I have to say sorry. My cat keeps on trying to steal my food. Well, I I just think that um, and if you know down the road, even if it's if it's you know long term down the road, having some having that as an option of playing and being involved in the new Eden universe, if like you can choose, maybe you can choose to play Eve, and you choose to play Dust, maybe you choose to be a fighter pilot for a carrier, you know, I mean, to me that would be amazing to have all of these avenues of approaching uh, New Eden. I, I really think that would just be, <laughs> it would make, it would make uh, Eve and Dust and, and you know whatever comes after that Eve VR basically a, an unconquerable game, I think. It is something that you would have to basically play. Okay, well I think we're going to move on. We've only got like five more minutes until the hour. Oh. I guess the last thing would be, so Mittens, you weren't a fan of Dust before this fan fest. I think that's fair. No, fair. it's uh, in its current build, it's a barely functional tech demo. Fair and enough. Kind of, <laughs> I, you know, I, I yeah. suppose it's inherently an insult to say this to you guys because we've been playing it for a while and you're involved no. in CPM, but I mean, the game is, um, you know, I've referred to it as having a poop filter. I mean, it looks like the, the gray and the brown has just been mashed over the screen. You know? Yeah, I, I, you know, what what happened there, of course, is, uh, you know, they they brought in uh, CCP Gian, uh, Brandon Moreno, to to fix the damn thing, and uh, he's only been with the company for about what, like a year maybe. But uh, the build that we're currently suffering through, uh, the, these iterations of Dust have only had about three months of his his actual direct hand on before uh, work on Uprising began. And so I think Uprising is really sort of the first real version of the game, and we're just going to politely act like you know, the current <laughs> dust doesn't exist. I actually have to agree with that, to be honest. I mean, they, I mean the, one of the reasons that I, I, I got so into Dust and, and because I continued playing Dust wasn't because it, it wasn't fun, because it was fun anyway, but it's because it had so much potential. And it's only really now with Planetary Conquest that the battles really start becoming properly meaningful. Mm -hmm. I think that's what been a problem for EVE players for many years is the potential of EVE and getting the potential to actually meet the actual is sort of in the, you know, the, the core drama and narrative of EVE development over the last decade or so. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I guess the why the 180. It seemed like you were very positive coming out of FanFest. Well, I played it. Uh, I was uh, in my new guise as a member of the media, and uh, we got to preview the Uprising build, and it's just a better game. The holes have been filled in. The gunplay is better. Uh, it looks less like a, a Halo knockoff from 2008, and more of a uh, a game that could begin to compete with Planet Side 2. Uh, which has most of my interest as far as in the uh, FPSs go. And, uh, you know, I just kick the tires on it. It seems like it's going in a decent direction. It looks like it might have a future now. It looks like a game that people might want to play uh, in some numbers, which means that a metagame and some interest might kick off. So it was time for us to, to move in and make some changes. Cool. I mean, so what are the goons' plans? Or, like, I know you can't give me exact specifics on that. Because you know it's Eve, but well, I mean to begin with, uh, nothing other than setting up an organization for uh, players in my coalition, the clusterfuck, to uh, to have fun in a well-ordered environment. Um, you know, previously speaking, I, you know, I don't, we don't give a flying fuck about faction warfare. We don't care about OSEC, but we know that eventually Dust is going to move into some sort of involvement in OSEC. And so we want to make sure that the structures are in place to ensure that our people are protected. Um, we're not planning on joining Dust in the meddling in faction war and really giving a fuck about planetary conquest. Uh, though the organizations might. Uh, the big thing was just getting rid of Surya the Wolf, who was uh, a bit of a twat. And uh, once he was out of the way, uh, we're porting most of the uh, former directors from uh, immobile infantry and that organization into a real group, uh, which is going to be named Goon Feet, uh, which is the best name group. ever. I best mean, it's you know, Goon Fleet, Goon Feet. You know, I was happy to hear that you were able to to liberate the name, though. I was surprised. Yeah, I mean, I thought that we were going to have to make a Goon Feet Federation to go along with Goon Storm Federation or something, but apparently uh, Goon Feet itself opened up, and so we're in good shape there. Um, 
so you know if, if you're looking for you know I don't I don't really give a crap about the most of the, the metagame and dust at the moment seems to be just console children slap fighting about who has better kill death ratios on the forums. And that's just terribly boring to me. <laughs> but uh, it's not far off. Yeah, and so we'll we'll sort of see where it goes. Uh, I'm bullish on uprising. I'm bullish on uh, on the team. Uh, I like Otley Svensson. I like Brendan Marino a lot. And um, so you know, right now, uh, when Uprising comes out, I think it'll be a fun game that a lot of people will be interested in playing from my organization. Um, but you know, we have an eye to the longer term. Will you be taking direct CEO ship over this new NC? Not likely. Uh, okay. I mean, I'll probably have a kill switch, um, but there's no real reason for me to uh, order around their daily use. I mean, other than disposing of people who are undesirable. Um, that tends to be how things work with our what we call SIGs, uh, special interest groups within Goodsworm. Uh, like Black Ops, uh, I don't run Black Ops myself. Black Ops might take orders from me, but uh, the day-to-day -day operation of SIGs we don't meddle with. We just make sure that they're functioning. And if they aren't functioning, we step in and make changes. Will, cool. will you make your character name known so that we know to hunt you down and shoot you in the face? Probably not. Oh. I'm actually not sure how much I'm going to be playing Rising. I'll probably kick the tires on it, but I'm, you know, I'm really waiting for, uh, for the game to change platforms is what it comes down to. I imagine it will eventually. I know nothing about that. It's just a guess on my end. Um, but I find the PS3 to be sort of clunky. I'll play with it a little bit, I'm sure, but we'll see. Yeah, the game the game does seem to be sort of it has a claustrophobic feel on on that hardware. That's something that not that being able to notice. change your field of view drives me crazy. I feel like I'm playing a game through a cardboard tube. <laughs> Yeah. I actually saw a video on why that is, though, and that's because console games are designed for TV, so your field of view is designed so that you're looking at a big screen that's far away, so the field of view is actually accurate. But if right. you just try and bring that in up close to you, then... It just doesn't work. No. But yeah. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, the, there doesn't really need to be any major changes or direct intervention from me again, uh, as long as the organization is going smoothly. And uh, we have compiled all of the uh, associated Dust players, not just in Goonstorm, but across the clusterfuck into one channel in Goonstorm Jabber called uh, CFC Dust uh, to go along with, you know, CFC Ops, CFC Diplo, blah, blah, blah. We have lots of channels named that way. And uh, I think you're just going to see a lot more uh, top-down coordination. Sweet. Cool. I mean, I have to say, though, thank you to everything the goons have done so far. I did spend the last couple of days blowing up teammates with grenades, and that's something goons did discover. Yes. Just a 3-2-1. There you go. It still works. <laughs> it still that's works. Ridiculous. It, but it's the only thing you can do to really combat people going AFK, so it makes it fan a little bit fantastic. Although it, it's, it does not work in Uprising. <sighs> Oh well. And, well they and, it. I mean, and neither does uh, neither does for, um, for switching over to another seat while in an LAV. That doesn't work either. I tried it on Nova the first option yeah. I got. It's, like, and it's a little weird that there's no team killing. I mean, most other modern FPSs. It, you know, that it, there's friendly fire in Planetary Conquest. Um, they would, you know, I would like to see a friendly fire in Faction Warfare, but there has to be a. a a good way to implement it, so it doesn't boil over and just become someone creating a one-day alt every day with a PSN and just going in and murdering everyone. Um, there has to be one thing I've always loved about Eve is there's always a consequence. You know, if you go to 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 gank and high sec, you're gonna your ship's gonna explode, and that's gonna be a consequence. You, there has to be. They could just implement the weapons lock system from that side too. I did. I actually that's one of the thing. One thing I do like. I, to me, the fact that I fire a bullet at someone and it doesn't hurt them irritates me. Yeah. It's because it's very, very jarring. It pulls you out of the experience and makes you think, oh, this is very much a video game. Especially walking through the middle of an orbital strike <laughs> to go hack a point and the whole time yeah. you're shaking because doody, the OB's, doody, doody. Yeah, the OB's hitting you in the head and you're like, I'm hacking. And you're watching everyone explode around you. You're like, ha, 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 you know that. Fuck you, space guy. I'm on your side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I think I think that uh, uh, 
there's going to be ways to implement it in a way that works and it works for the console community. Um, it's just going to take some dev time to do that. Although I do think um, you know, orbital strikes should just be everything in that area just dies. One would hope. Yeah. One would... Although then, what's the difference between a precision strike and an orbital? Orbital strike is different. It's bigger, more damage, or just shields. Fair enough. Also, like the orbital strike bug that got found by goons. Yes. Oh, that was that amazing. was an amusing video. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you found the right ding noise. That that made. <laughs> we were we were searching like this ding noise. No, not this ding noise. This ding noise. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, do you have to go right now, or are you wanting to stay on for a few more minutes? I can handle another question if you have, but uh, and if you have something on deck, I can answer it. And then beyond that, I should probably take off. I guess, favorite memory from this fan fest? That's a tough one. Uh, I did a lot of fun things this fan fest, and uh, it felt like I was there for a month. And sometimes it's the little things. I mean, uh, we rented an apartment this time. We didn't have a hotel, and we had uh, we had six of us in this amazing luxury place that we got for only 160 bucks a night uh, off Airbnb. And you know, in the past at fan fest, uh, liquor is the order of the day, but this time I stuck mostly to beer. And so I didn't have a hangover every morning that I woke up and get up every morning and I'd like put some Alka-Seltzer in because we're a bunch of lawyers basically in the, in the apartment, so everybody's a professional alcoholic. Uh, get the, get the Alka-Seltzer and there was a French press there. I don't have a French press at home. It was just so civilized to, to wake up in the morning after just insanity, raw insanity every night. You know, like half my, half my Alka-Seltzer and my French press coffee and, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that seems trivial, but sometimes it's the, the little things that stick out. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a grand old time this time. I mean, got to see a lot of friends, got to, to meet my new colleagues in the media, which was entertaining. And, uh, yeah. But uh, it does sound like uh, I have to go. So I will see you boys and girls later. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for inviting me to your lovely... Uh, I, I guess it's not really a podcast if there's video, is it? <laughs> uh, there is an audio version, so... I guess talk show is the correct term. Talk show, that's right. Well, thank you all for having me, and I will see you later. Oh, thank you for coming on. Cheers. Have a good one. Oh, oh and then sad. everything shifts out of the way of the screen regions, <laughs> so I have to redo everything. Ah, uh, useful. <laughs> I'll do that quickly. So I guess we'll just go to the dock and go through the days, if everybody's cool with going through the days. Hey, what? Sorry? Yes, uh, that's, uh, that's And true. then everybody scrambles to open the Google Doc. What's going on? Do we have uh, um, show notes, uh, basically, to go through and daily? Can you can you paste it in here so I can see? Yeah. It? Okay. Yeah. This should be up here in just a second. No, I can't figure out where the, where the heck did the... So for anybody who's from just the Dust community and doesn't know Eve, that is the most terrifying man in the universe. Also, it's... it's, it's You're giving him way too much credit. It's basically who Zion would say is He's the devil. He's a cuddly teddy bear. As far as Zion concerned, he is the devil. The absolute <laughs> devil. <laughs> hey, I'm just going on what Zion said. According to Zion, he's the devil. You believe everything Zion says. Oh, Absolutely. Everything Zion said is the absolute truth. Do you not believe anything Zion said? <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, right, I think we'll get back to the actual show. And yeah, I think so. But yeah, that was the Next Mitani. Saying, you can Next check his saying, website, the Mitani. Been a great... yeah. so. um, yes, fantastic. <laughs> website. Um, which day? So do we start with uh, Wednesday now? Uh, I guess yeah. like getting to FanFest and like what like what's Iceland <laughs> oh. like before FanFest? Oh, for getting, anybody who was there yeah, before. Iceland is, Iceland is awesome. I, 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 this is my first, it was my first time traveling out of the country. Um, I was only supposed to go two 
Iceland, but I ended up through various flights being delayed and canceled, ended up in London as well. Um, granted, I'll I only feel your pain. I, well, I only inside. I only got to see the inside of uh, Heathrow Airport, but London was fun um, for the five hours that I was there. Iceland was amazing. It to me, it reminds me of like a fro- uh, a cold or a frozen version of Hawaii. Um, the, I mean, you really get a sense of that with the volcanic activity and um, and the people themselves. It's just it was awesome. I I I you know it it blew away all of my expectations. Everyone knows did. Icelandians are crazy. Yeah, but they're still yeah crazy, but awesome too. I we um, crazy is awesome. God. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, we actually had uh, we stayed in a flat. Um, it was uh, me and a couple guys from my alliance, um, and uh, we also had uh, one of our friends who was in our alliance is actually um, um, Icelandic uh, wombat in combat. And um, although I didn't get to to um, uh, partake in a lot of his hospitality, he took uh, Telk and uh, Regnum out to the countryside and did a gold, a little bit of a golden circle tour. Um, that was very awesome. He kind of uh, showed us the good restaurants to eat at, um, some good uh, local Icelandic dishes. It was just, it was an awesome, awesome experience. I, I'm definitely going to be going back next year, that's for sure. Uh, did that anybody else get early? I... Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, did anyone else get there like before FanFest kicked off? Yeah, I, I joined there on Monday and because I had stuff at CCP like on I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, I can't remember. But I got there on Monday and left Monday, so I was there for a week. And I arrived that Sunday and then left the following Monday, so I was there for eight days. We also took some time to, to drive through the countryside, uh in those those first couple days before all of the uh, official FanFest stuff kicked off. So and I brought my, my wife with me, and it's a great time to, uh, for her to see the country, too, and, and uh, you know, as well as the FanFest stuff and, and get to meet all the people that I've worked with all year and, and uh, you know, see that I, I'm, this is more than just me disappearing into an office for, you know, several hours every evening, you know, but that there's, you know, this this community that, that I've been able to, to help out and, and uh, for her to see what we're all about. So and it was cool also to see uh, the amount of uh, dust players that that came out. There was definitely a, a nice like kernel uh, of the dust community that that attended. And I, I, I don't. What did you guys get the the vibe as far as the the head count? Like it, it, I want to like take a stab and say it was somewhere between you know thirty, forty, maybe fifty dust players that were like there specifically to see all the dust stuff. Um, so small, but. Uh, but enough that we, you know, filled the the round tables. Very vocal, a very small but vocal group, yeah. I would say. But but I mean, but in a constructive way. I mean, there was there was yes. like, I thought the round tables there was some, um, you know, talking over each other and some, you know, some heated, passionate moments. But in general, the round tables, I I, I noticed uh, a, a distinct difference between the eve tables and dust ta- round tables, and that the dust round tables there was way more times when the Developers would whip out a notebook and write something down, or they would, you know, specifically acknowledge that's a possibility. Now that we're hearing that you guys want it, we'll add it to our, our roadmap. Like it seemed like there was a lot more tangible results that came out of the dust sessions than the eve sessions, and I think I think that really shows that despite all of the the sort of reputation that the dust forums and the dust community has for being rowdy and and rambunctious and and immature and and all of that, that yeah, where where dust is at developmentally. Uh, they're, they're, CCP is having to rely on our feedback uh, even more than they rely on EVE players for feedback in yep. order to get this done right. And there's just massive opportunities, you know, to to make a difference if you can, uh, you know, actually make uh, and construct good posts, which is still a challenge for a lot of people out there. But, um, you know, those that, those that can pull it together, are, you know, are going to have a, a, a real, you know, stake in how this game is shaped, you know, beyond just those of us that are on the CPM. Point it, yeah. Make, make, if you have a point to make, please make it eloquently. Yeah. Um, I, de- I definitely got that feel, though, um, at the at the panels. There, yeah, there was there was a little uh, there was a little bit of rowdiness every now and then, but it was more, like you said, in a, a, more passion uh, than anything else. Uh, 
and to me, you definitely saw that. You and not only that, after the panels were over, you know, players pulling the developers aside and having you know conversations and stuff like that, it just seemed um, everything was gelling really well. I, I think um, part of that has to do with the, um, I mean, the core of players that went to Fan Fest. I mean, that's the people who went to Fan Fest just for dust. I mean, that's the core of the core. That's just people that are super dedicated in terms of the game. Um, mm. I just think, and you really, you really got that sense of dedication from the people that were out the round robins. Yeah, you know, many times in the past, I mean, I've, ever, as everyone knows, I come from an Eve background, but I pretty much now stopped playing Eve to play Dust. I can say confidently that if it wasn't for Dust, I would, I would probably have never really came to the fan fest because I've, I've heard that fan fest is awesome, and that you, fan fest is awesome. <laughs> but um, without, without have, have get, get, you gotten into uh, into dust, I doubt. I doubt I would have ever actually got uh, gone to fan fest. Yeah, I think a lot of people have uh, stopped playing Eve because of dust, and uh, I'm definitely gonna have to go to fan fest next next year. Like, yes. I'm gonna have to make that happen. I couldn't make that happen this year. I didn't quite have enough money to be able to afford it, but uh, definitely next year. I don't think the EVE players have any idea what they're in for by this time next year. I mean, I think, I think first of all, what we're going to see with Uprising is that, is that it, you know, everything that Mitten said about it being a, a brand new game is absolutely true. It, it, it's, it's fairly unrecognizable in terms of what we've become numb to quality-wise. And I think there's, you know, we, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, players bleeding off here and there and player retention and all that stuff. But, uh, you know... The way I've always kind of looked at it is, you know, no matter what we bled off in the last year from people that were getting bored with the game, if they were able to pull off something that's on the scale of Uprising, that level of polish and added content, that you'd see a lot of those people rush right back. And and I, I'm very confident that we're going to see a big spike in, in interest again from a lot of those people that got burnt out on the build that, you know, as long as they're, they come back and are willing to try it for 15 minutes, you know, you're going to have all those those converts won back. And I think also all of the people that have just never been interested in trying it to begin with because they've heard bad reviews, you know, from those of us that have been suffering through it, um, you're going to see a, a huge amount of new players come into this too. Not And that that's not even counting the marketing money that they're going to throw at it now that they consider it official release. And so, yeah. you know, with the fact that, like, Dust is already rivaling EVE in terms of the number of people playing it, uh, you know, I, that, I, I don't see a reason why that couldn't necessarily, like, double or triple by this time next year. And what that's going to do in, in terms of fan fest attendance is anybody's guess. And so... You know, especially now that there's a, a like little seed, a, a kernel of of people that were there and have good stories to tell. I think mm -hmm. as the game yes. blows up, the 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 number of boots on the ground, so to speak, uh, at next year's fan fest is going to be quite interesting, and it'll be it'll be fun to see those those two cultures and those two communities uh, sort of begin to meld together in person, and not just be like the dust group doing their their thing, which is kind of the feel, you know at this year's fan fest where they would go around to each of the event, events on their own. So I'm excited for it. I agree. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I did say is that um, today I very proud... <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm currently... Um, I, I went to my parents' place. Um, well, I'm at my parents' place right now on the way back from a uh, fan fest and I ended up babysitting these two, or the two two Siamese kittens, um, uh, while they're in Chile. You know, like I say, I mean, today I went, I went off to uh, uh, into the town uh, to watch uh, Iron Man three, and I I went out very proudly wearing my Dust five one four t shirt that I got at Fan Fest. And after the film, I went to the, to the game shop, and I, and one of the guy there said, "Hey, I know that game. Is is it supposed to be quite bad?" It's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well. <laughs> you know I, the other thing is you, we don't want to discount all of the work that um, all of the testers have put into the game over the past, yeah. leading up to Uprising. Um, there's a lot, a lot that's in Uprising is because specifically of all of what the testers and the feedback and the community have brought to the table. Absolutely. And so I. I mean, it's going to be a new game, but it's going to be a game that was made by the community, I think. 
Um, and I think that is fantastic. Um, I think um, going forward, we still need to make sure that that interaction between the community and CCP takes place. I mean, just because some people are worried because there's a CPM that you, for some reason that all of a sudden that drops a wall between them and CCP, and that really uh, doesn't need to be the case, and nor is it the case. Um, and I'm really pumped. I mean, if this is where we can do, if, if we can go from chromosome to uprising and having this much of a difference, to me, I'm very excited about the progress that can be made um, on the builds going into the future. I think it's going to be awesome. I just it, we just have to keep. Um, CCP's feet to the fire in terms of um, getting those builds out in a reasonable time and making sure that there is legitimate progress from build to build. I agree. I mean, it, just, they, although this this build's been in the works for a while, I mean, we have to remember that. I mean, this, I mean, that's one of the reasons I've been so burned out on the current build. It's, I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think it's like eight. I mean, apart from like the, the other couple of builds, there's been like ma minor, or well, major fixes here and there, and deployments. I mean, I think this actual, in terms of content, have been around for like eight months or now, and that's just. <laughs> Chen's is getting ganked over there. <laughs> uh, hey, no you know they, they always say dust is hardly hurting cats, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. A pro cat herder right here. Pro cat herder. No, I, I mean I. That is not I the first through, time I've been called that. No, I mean I went through the exact same thing, Genzo, last last year because I mean obviously during for the bulk of last year the the CSM and and Eve related issues you know took up the majority of my time and so uh, I was always the the CSM member that that was playing more dust than anybody else but I had that same sort of. Um, Build fatigue. Uh, yes. Where it was very easy to jump in, check out what new changes they'd made, you know, and and test out, you know, and see if there was anything like excitingly different. And then when there wasn't, you know, it would be like, all right, well, it, especially and this was especially true during the sort of reset period where you knew that every single build they were gonna, you know, punch you back to zero and give you all your money back anyways. That was that was when it was the hardest for me to stay. Uh, you know, connected on a on a day to day basis with, with yeah. the community, and so it was it was fun to watch you, the rest of you guys that are that are now my CSM uh, colleagues or CPM colleagues. It was fun to sort of watch what you guys were doing socially and and organizing these these structures and, and coming up with corporations and all this stuff that I didn't understand why it was taking place because there wasn't like a need need for it gameplay wise, but it was still exciting to sort of watch from a distance. Um, but for me personally, it wasn't until Chromosome and the fact that it was open beta and the fact that there weren't going to be any more resets, or th so we thought at the time, um, that it was that I felt really compelled to to sort of jump in and, and grind and keep up with everything and and uh, make sure I was you know uh, had the same amount of skill points as everyone else so I could compete and, and really uh, and that was that was when I uh, signed up with uh, with Delta Force and and you know jumped into a into corp operations I'm so on a day-to-day -day basis. That. <laughs> well, now, well, well, I think we'll still do. A, you know, this, I think it's you know just destiny that we we're getting uh, six squad. You know, you get six man squads on May sixth. We have six uh, CPM members. This is either like you know some satanic you know. <laughs> You know, we're either gonna like open the the door to hell when we all get together and 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 deploy you, as a squad, but I uh, mean the I, door to the captain's quarters is coming open. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> no. or but I mean I I think I do think it'll be fun, and I do think that we should uh you know do some streams and and uh you know have some fun uh, as a as a group and and give people a chance to to blow up their their CSM dele or CPM delegates. Well, like I said, I, I'm doing a, I'm planning to do another a, a charity stream. Mm -hmm. However, however, I might actually uh, have to change it from the fourth, well, from the 14th, which I originally planned. <laughs> well, I, I think I think it'll. The um, timing, I mean, the timing can still work because none of the fights happen for 48 hours at least. Yeah, but. Yeah, it'd be bad for me to to sort of like show every. I, th I don't think that my alliance people would be happy if I was streaming exactly where we're going all the time. <laughs> no. Um 
I was such. I mean, I'll probably have to make, make a day. I, th- I think I might make, make it a day early, like the the um the day before, um, like 24 hours before, leading up to the before the downtime of the four, the 14th, and then mm-hmm. do that 24 hour stream. So yeah, we're doing a 24 hour stream, and we'll uh, one of the prizes that I am going to be using is the uh the the poster that I got from uh from the Dust 514 Fan Fest Eve. Tournament, which is covered and absolutely covered in um, in C- CP uh, signatures, and I can actually get that and show it off. And one lucky person, or even one person, I haven't decided if it's going to be either a prize or a charity auction. One of the two. We'll have to see. I think an auction would be good. I think yeah, an auction actually, would work well for it. I'm going to grab it. You guys keep talking. Okay. Oh. Well, while we wait for chances to get back, shall we move on to Wednesday? Wednesday. Oh God, Wednesday. That was a. Th- so I was supposed to go to DC, and then go to Iceland, but instead I got rerouted to uh to London, and I ended up coming twelve hours late. But um, I know Hans, you were there most of the day. I was Wednesday. I was actually on the Golden Circle tour that day, so uh, I I wasn't there for the end. That was the day that that the rest of the CPM had their first rehearsal for the. Uh, the you know our participation in the keynote uh, battle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that so was... that was that was everyone's first chance, and I, you know I didn't I didn't meet up with everyone that day uh, because I had to go to the office and take care of a couple CSM uh, details when I got back from the the Golden Circle tour. But I do remember coming in Thursday morning and just like the sheer amount of delight on <laughs> Genesis and Kate. I mean, these guys were all like dragging me from one screen to the next. And, you got to check out this. You got to check out this. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh, and it was, I mean, I could tell that, that like things were, are, were going to be really, really good with uprising just, just based on the, their facial expression alone without even having a time to sit down and like pick up a controller, like the amount of excitement that, that, I mean, that was being demonstrated was that's when I knew it was all going to be okay. Yes, here is the poster by the way. It is pretty freaking big, and it's covered, totally covered with with CCP signatures. I don't know if you can actually see them on. Oh yeah, we can see them there. But there are very many different uh, signatures there. Um, no, a minute ago, I think you said CPM signatures, and I was like, "Well, you can't, you can't cover it." And I, and I don't know that we're that famous right, really, enough that people really want our signatures. But, yeah, I mean, it's cool I to get the developers on it. Yeah, I can see here we got. Uh, I mean, take a look here. Uh, we have CCP Frame, CCP uh, Gian, uh, Praetorian, Visible, Nothing, Navigator. Did you get Fox Aussie. Four? I did not get Fox Four. Oh. He, Oh. He disappeared. I I know he absolutely sucks. Now you have to fly to Iceland. I know. Just to get his signature. We got GM Pyro, <laughs> G- uh, CCB uh, Sentinel, but God, loads awesome. of people. Just uh, draw a sock Lang. in the corner, and people will think it's him. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'll I'll mail it with a sock. You'll get a free sock with this poster if you should do which you want it. <laughs> there you go. And you got Commander Wang right there. Loads of people. So this is a great thing. And I. I I am currently working on something. It's something pretty special. Um, the, the CCP people have not said yes to it yet, but I'm going to bug them pretty hard. I can't tell you what it is yet, but if I manage to get to get what I'm trying to get, it will make it pretty awesome. So you might want to watch the space. Cool. Uh, I mean, did anyone go to the concert just out of interest? Yes. Yes, I did. That was fantastic. I. Uh, You're talking about Symphony, right? Yes. Yeah. Listen, some of that music. I mean, I've. I mean, I've been hearing that some of that music for eight years, and hearing it performed live, and then having like the video in the background. I mean, it was. It's very beautiful. It was pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Granted, with with jet lag, oh, the see the a lot. So much of e music is just very relaxing, and kind of like uh, uh kind of med. You know, puts you in a med. You know, in a meditation. So you, part of that, you're like. Ah, oh, and then you're like jet lag. You're like, oh, it's so awesome, jet lag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was no, it was something special for sure. That was awesome. This is your oh. very polite way of saying you fell asleep during the concert no. multiple times. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't fall asleep. Huh? No, no, I actually, no, I actually dug my nails into my hand as hard as I could, you know, and made sure because I was like, this is so amazing because it really was. It was really something quite fantastic. I'm, and I'm, oh, I'm glad that they're gonna. Uh, I think there's a couple ways they're gonna. 
I think they're having it in the collector's edition, but they're also uh, letting you. Da- There's some other way that you're going to be able to access it. I imagine uh, there'll be a well. download, and there'll probably yeah. be like a pay for it with a form or a plex or something like that as well. Yeah. Actually, um, one of the most common feedback that I've I've heard from people is that they want an option to just replace the stock yes. music files in the game with that yes. soundtrack. And I, I think that's absolutely something worth following up with CCP on. You know that, you know they they used to have a jukebox functionality that they that they removed because because it's you know it no one was using it and the people that were using it was because it was a a like ironically like a backdoor code way of like botting or some weird weird thing like that. But uh, they they pulled out the jukebox and uh and but I mean there's there's got to be a you know a way of just replacing those files. That with it shouldn't be that like technically challenging, and I think yeah, that, that should absolutely be an, an option for for Eve players to do to actually have real or, orchestral music yes. replacing uh, their uh, their stock soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, I mean it really was beautiful, and I ha- I did have to just um, whip out my phone and record a little bit because it really was just amazing. I don't know if I was supposed to do that, but. Uh, well, the entire thing's on YouTube, and uh, I actually have it recorded on my hard drive as well, so... Oh, okay. Phew. <laughs> yeah, I just whipped out my phone and, and just recorded it, because it really was just absolutely beautiful. They they gave me uh, permission to put up, like, video of Dolan, uh, CCP Dolan, dancing at the uh, party at, at the end of the world, so... Or the party at the top of the world. At the end of the world. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think if I can, uh, you know, post up you know, that kind of uh, entertainment than something that's much more benign like a symphony, I'm sure, is okay. Okay. Well, I think we're coming up to just over an hour, uh, although we did have tech problems and we did start late, so I actually have no idea how long we've been recording for. But uh, (laughs) we'll move on to Thursday, and we've already covered the CPM meeting, which I know was on Thursday, Um, but the other big thing was the Dust keynote happened on Thursday? Oh, it was that was fun. Um, uh, luckily, they uh, CCP allowed the uh, CPM to actually do participate in the rehearsals for um, the the battle that took place. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. It's like to shoot this person, don't shoot this person, you know. But do not steamroll the devs. I think <laughs> it was like our biggest set of orders. So uh, it's it's a shame because um I I only rem- I as, as many people know I. I brought my um my capture card to, to FanFest, and uh, what really sucked though is because I only actually remembered to bring it to FanFest on the very last day, and so on the very last day I was trying to record as much as I possibly could, and then the this uh, in the uh, media area, and then um, one of the the devs just came up and said, "Oh, I'm sorry, we're shutting down the servers." Like, oh. <laughs> I had all this stuff I wanted to record, so much stuff. And if I just remembered to bring it earlier, everyone would get so much more footage. But I did upload one hour of completely unedited footage, so that should be all right. <laughs> but uh, I mean, my only question for that is, uh, Kane, how did you die? Uh, I was the only person that died on our team. That's correct. I walked around the corner and... No. Uh, um, Grab. And a uh, someone with a gun lock, he basically put a rail turret straight straight through my chest. Um, ironically, uh, I heard uh, what happened was is someone leaned over and said, Just "Don't shoot them so much." <laughs> but, I'm pretty sure that's Commander Wang. But but I did I did actually get to blow the um I, the person who uh, shot me with the railgun turret then died uh, on my next respawn by my forge gun and then I proceeded to flay lock and kill several other people afterwards. So I I um. Felt very satisfied. I felt very satisfied after the fact. Uh, anything else on Thursday before we go to Friday? I think that was most of it. Mainly just pre- uh, pre- preparation for the uh, keynote and uh, just yeah. a lot of a lot of hands-on time with the build. So okay. this kitten keeps on trying to eat my food. Oh, there's a kitten. Yeah, she she hasn't quite properly understood the uh, the concept of of food not being hers. I think cats really ever truly understand that concept of food not no. being hers. This is true. Okay, Friday then. 
Uh, Dust Eve tournament ha like kicked off on Friday, and I know all of you entered that, or at least Jen. Except for me. And, oh, yes. Hans didn't enter, but Kane and no, Jen did. No, no, he was supposed to. Was, he was supposed to. Girl. Torn like million different ways between CSM and CPM stuff. So I had, I had a uh, you know my panel and that sort of thing that I had to do on Friday. So. Uh, and another interview, or a couple interviews that day, and so it, it just wasn't, you know, feasible for me to participate in the tournament as well. So, but every, everyone else did, I believe. Yes, um, it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a blast. Uh, uh, I think uh, um, from our organization, it uh, ended up being uh, Wombat in Combat, um, Telk, and uh, Regnum. Uh, and I think Regnum was one of the few players who actually had came, came to Dust who had no prior EVE experience at all. Um, he literally had only played Dust, so having him having him able to come was really something special. Uh, but uh, it, the competition could have been better, but uh, I think it was a lot of fun, though. I think, uh, and what the uh, developers did in terms of uh, really giving a lot of polish um, in terms of the orbital strikes... Uh, mechanics and, you know, seeing, like, you know, the progression of the match and stuff like that, I think was really well done. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, just echoing what you said, like, I do wish there was a bit, I mean, because they, uh, originally they, they had planned the tournament to be 16 teams, but in the end, as many people know, it was only 18, uh, sorry, it's eight teams, sorry, and uh, so half the teams that <laughs> were originally meant to come in the tournament so it was a bit of a disappointment on that end, really. But next year, hopefully, it'll be a lot more interesting. Yeah, I mean, how was the mechanics for the orbital strike, actually? Because that was something different. Well, yeah, yeah the, how that worked is that um, in the EVE up in the space, there was like a, a bunker, like the, um, like the factional warfare bunker. And for every 30 seconds that they held it uncontested, they got an orbital strike, uh, a player yeah. orbital strike, and um, that made things very interesting. And the first couple of matches, our team was a bit rocky because most of our team on in the Eve side was well, weren't really PVPers apart from Vacrame and um, Gaichi's roommate. I forget his name now, Viperius, that's his name. Um, but people like Rock Doc and yeah, a couple of others that had pretty much never killed anyone more or less and been pretty much completely care bears. But uh, after a couple of games, they had it down to a complete art, and we were completely uncontested. It was really great. I was so proud of them. I really was. Yeah, I mean, in the finals as well, like, you weren't just... Because you were definitely the strongest Dust team there. Mm. I mean, I don't think anyone can really dispute that. But your EVE team was winning as well? So... Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> I mean, like, like the first couple of matches, they were they were dominated. But then uh, they got after a Triple A's Eve team got knocked out. They gave the, our guys their fit, which was working very very well. And that uh, I I don't know I don't know really what it was off the top of my head, but whatever it was, whatever they were doing, it was absolute magic, and they 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 did so well. I would I originally thought that we were going to be pretty much dodging orbitals for, for almost all of the tournaments, really. And it really just wasn't the case. They did so well. Yeah, it was. Um, I was. Um, yeah, I was very happy to have uh, full access to all those OBs. And I think it's an interesting mechanic. Um, I think you know having the happen every thirty seconds may be something that should be maybe not in uh, the law. You know, go live. But I did like the fact that the Eve side performance is really was directly tied to how many orbital strikes that you got. Um, rather than it kind of being a little bit gamey in terms of being based off of war points on the ground. So I think yeah. it's if it's something that can be developed and put into uh, into dust, I think that would be a really good move forward. Yeah. And, and not only that, having the um, status of the fight on the ground broadcast over the district satellite, granted it was much more uh, tournament kind of esports esque but uh, I mean taking that code and that element and making it something that you can then show to EVE players to let them know what's going on in the battle on the ground, you know, just EVE it up, make it more like a, um, 
one of the broadcasts that you would see in terms of the wanted signs on the on the Concord billboards and stuff like that, I think would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely get uh, it was it was nice to finally get a, a chance to to play Uprising, you know, in terms of an actual in a competitive way, rather than uh, just being you know <laughs> just this cat. <laughs> uh, rather than, <laughs> rather, <laughs> you know, rather than just being like going through a rehearsal and saying, you know, move here, shoot this, it was it was really nice to actually see um, the competitive play. Uh, <laughs> well, and Kane, you you've you've been really involved in uh, a big advocate for for the development of esports in general, yes. running running tournaments and that sort of thing. So, do you do you think that this this tournament, uh, I mean, this maybe the basic structure of this, you know, timed factual warfare plex uh, combined with a ground fight, do you th- do you yes. think it's something that they could take with them and, and turn into a professional? Format for oh. you know combined tournaments between the two games for, for a type for a type of tournament uh, play I think so I, I yeah. really do yeah. I mean um I got to speak with um the representative from Razor afterwards and he was very excited uh, with how it showed I mean it was very it's a it just goes to show how dynamic of a game combining even dust can be and I think that's one of the things that's a really a selling point it really is a selling point is the combination is the link. The link between these two games is what makes this, you know, it makes Dust completely unlike any other game out there. I mean, what other game has an, an, a, a full, basically, simulation of a universe floating above your head that can then interact with you in that yeah. game as well? I mean, one thing that, uh, that Nova Knife suggested for future fan fest was to do away with the, uh, with the pure EVE tournament entirely and just have the EVE Dust tournament. And actually, I think it's a decent idea. Well, well, I I think that having the um, I, like I said, in terms of having it be a mode, uh, you have Eve Dust type mode. I think, and then you have I would love to see um an arena mode as well, to where it's just you know uh much more you know that one v one um you know the you know basically gladiator pure players style. yeah gladiator style pure player skill against pure player skill, and also have. The Eve Dust combined. I think basically let each game shine in its own version, and then also show how well they shine together. I, is is really to me is what's going to make um, the whole combination of New Eden and the the sports that you can the sporting events that you can derive out of it something that you really haven't seen before. And the fact that these aren't games that are going to be – there isn't going to be Dust 1, Dust 2, Dust 3, Dust 4. There's going to be Dust, and there's going to be Eve. Is something that you can really build a brand around in terms of sporting events, and I'm very excited about it. And I think um, you know there were some technical hiccups um, and logistical issues uh, with the Eve Dust tournament, but I'm, honestly, it's the first one that's been run in this way, there's always hiccups with any any tournament that you do. I mean, uh, the Orbital Strike tournament had hiccups. Uh, the Chromosome Cup, um, which is wrapping up, you know, had its own hiccups. But the thing is, you learn from them, and then you iterate, and you move on. And I think that it's, it's going to be awesome. I really do think so. I mean, uh, I guess one of my last questions would be, from a player perspective, how was the tournament? Like, did it run fine? Like, yeah, um, ran fine. Well, between the, the fan fest one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it ran pretty pretty smoothly. I mean, um, they, all of the battles had particular time schedules when everyone needs to be there, so everyone knew where they should be and when. It was well, uh, it was pretty pretty smooth, really. Well, to me, I had a few criticisms of it. Uh, one, they should have um, uh, should have been a little more meticulous with keeping a log of who's sitting where. Um, I think it would be really nice in future tournaments to. Um, have each player's name on their character rather than it being like AA tournament for you know that sort of thing. Um, that kind of gives it that more esports polish to it. Um, and I think uh, uh, at the end um, when you distribute the prizes, um, it was more of kind of a, uh, the players who got the uh, the prizes. It was more of like a table set up, and then they would go and pick one from each thing. I think. Uh, and for future events, what it needs to be is we need more organized. Like you know, each person has a bag set up. This is you know a bag for you know people who placed first. This is a bag for people who placed second and third, and so on and so forth. I think uh, there's just, but these are just little nuances. There, uh, overall, the tournament was very, I think, very well received. 
um, by both uh, uh, the uh, you know the sponsors that sponsored the tournament uh, and also by the players themselves. Um, I think a lot of people really had a lot of fun with it. I mean, I mean, the biggest thing that really shocked me was that uh, I was very surprised to see uh, uh, Team Haggis knocked out in the in the uh, in the semifinals. Yeah, I, I was really. I mean, because apart from us, so, I mean, they were the only real semi-organized team who'd won last year, and um, they they went up to, with a team with no friends, which was basically the, the team where a bunch of random people were stuck when because they didn't have a team. So I was really surprised to see that they beat. Last year's champions. Well, you had some really good Zion TCD players that showed up for the people with no friends team, and I think that um, I think their performance really helped um, pull people with no friends um, on top of Haggis. Um, so that was really interesting to see mm. um, some. Haggis really... were very sure of themselves. Well, the thing <laughs> is, well, it just goes to show that even a couple of really good players can dynamically change a match. Um, I mean, I was very, I was very happy with uh, uh, Regnum's performance, uh, particularly over the course of the match, and also um, I think Nat, Nat, uh, Jinza, what's, what was your? I can never say his name right. Your tanker. Nat Mortar. Nat Mortar, a absolute blast to play with, and also a fantastic tank driver, and also um, I think uh, Winnis uh, from Betamax in the air. Uh, he actually ended up being uh, flying over with me. Uh, he got stuck in the same situation flying to London. Um, but he was doing barrel rolls and flips and stuff like that all during the tournament. It was um, it was really awesome to see players who have just honed their skills really shining um, in the tournament and and being able to kind of show off those those abilities. Uh, to me, uh, I just it was it was a fantastic experience. The, it, despite any other of the the um, the smaller things that happened along the way. Yeah, I mean, like, my last point would be that uh, from a viewer-observer perspective, Dust needs a real observer mode. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Um, the, I, I, to me, the, yeah, the first-person perspective, while it's good, it needs to be part of a tool in a toolbox, not an end unto itself. They really need yeah. cameras in the matches, like in the corners and stuff, and, you know, a, flo you know, a spectator. Um, for you know, for official tournaments like that, I think there would be no problem. I mean, we've discussed before the issue with ghosting and stuff like that, um, in maybe in arena play if you had a spectator mode. Uh, but I think you know, in official tournaments like that, I think that's definitely something that the developers should look into having to give it just that that extra edge and that extra uh, uh, crispness to the tournament, how it's presented. Oh, I mean. Uh... I don't know if any of you actually know who this guy is, but Ryan T. Shooter or Shudder is actually looking for a job in the games industry right now, and he made the uh, he made like a custom uh, observer map for uh, StarCraft II, and all the big tournaments are using that now. And he's actually looking for a job in the games industry, so hey. maybe CCP should look into well, that. Maybe those C CCP guys who watch the show regularly should. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I think I, that's one of the encouraging things about the uh, you know, the marketing push that uh, CCP is doing with all of this. You know, the fact that we're this close to release, and the fact that that they're gonna you're still gonna start seeing this on TV and on billboards, and and that combined with what they talked about on the the sort of combined keynote on the final night, where they're taking the stories that come out of New Eden and turning it into comic books and and TV and all these other mediums, and you know, to me, I don't think any of us know which of those projects are going to be successful yet commercially. But if any one of them is and starts bringing in more revenue, then that that's you know obviously one of the first places that CCB can can put it is is hiring more people and and adding their staff. And and it looks like you know they've got a lot of these frameworks set up to the point where you know once they do have more room in their budgets, they can you know put that money to use right away. And I'm hoping that that's what we'll see is is you know a lot of that money that comes in from all of this being you know reinvested back into the property itself. And if if that's if that's what they do with it, then then you know we're gonna only see this this progress you know start to accelerate beyond what we've even seen in the last three months. Cool. Uh, a couple more things on Friday. There were the 
most of the dust panels happened on Friday, I think. Uh, did you guys get a chance to go watch them? I couldn't really go so many because we were. In, I was in the tournament and I was trying to watch the uh, scope out the the um the competition. But uh, and then when I wasn't, I was up basically trying to test as much of the build as I could. Yeah. But it was. I, I really wish I could have gone, and perhaps next year I'll be able to go to more more of the stuff. Um, yeah, we, uh, I made it to um, a few of the panels. Uh, basically, any time I wasn't in the tournament, I was trying to make it as, to the panels as much as possible. And uh, one of them was the. Uh, I know a lot of people w uh, were really interested in the maps and the the leaps and bounds that they have made uh, in terms of how they build their maps. Uh, I wasn't that one actually. Yeah. The sockets and stuff like that. Uh, to me, a lot of the issue, a lot of the labor-intensive part of the map creation was creating a procedure. Creating, how do you get from no map at all to a map that works in dust and it works and it plays out with the socket system. Um, the sockets in dust, that would be like your large structures, you know, the different buildings and stuff, so you have the same the height. Yeah, the yeah. subsystem structure. Yeah, so you have the same height map, but then you have these different structures that are plugged into the sockets. Well, now that they have a procedure down for that, um, it can, I, I expect the workflow to be, to go much faster. Um, and hope because I really, I really do think that in terms of content, new maps is key. Uh, nothing makes the game stale, more stale, faster than playing, than you know, getting to know this sand, that particular sand dune really well. It's like, oh, yeah. hello, Mr. Sand Dune. I have seen you a thousand times. I'm gonna, you know, you know, I know exactly how I'm gonna go over this sand dune. Oh, look, and there's the rock. Hello, rock that I've seen a thousand bazillion times as well. Yeah, that, that's know. the reason I think that the E3 build got so stale so quickly is because there was um, in the E3, E3 build, uh, Line Harvest or Plateau, whatever it was called, um, was the only map available. And I think that's the main reason that, that so many people were getting so bored of the E3 build so quickly because there was only one build available, uh, one map available. Yeah, yeah. it's Maps are key. Maps, because uh, the thing is with a new map, comes new tactics, new ways to, to move around, you know, new strategies to formulate, new ways to, like, you know, something, you know, a map may make it to where it's really good for tanks. Maybe there's another map that's much better for dropships. There's another map, maybe it's more infantry focused. I think that, to me, in terms of making sure you just, that's one of the things you, I can't, I can't stress this enough. That is definitely one of the things that's going to make sure that players keep coming back to this game. And, I mean, there's many other things. The core gameplay mechanics is right up there. It's on the tippy top of the list, actually. But your core mechanics, and then basically where you actually use those core mechanics. I want I want to see. Um, what I really want to see is um, is gas planets in Cloud City, and, uh, and if you have a dropship and you need a dropship to get from platform to platform, is and the wind buffering your dropship across the planet. I mean, that would be awesome. Oh, the. The potential, the possibilities for the future for for dust are definitely unquestionable. Definitely unquestionable. But even in the short term, there's a lot of like cool stuff coming. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm very I'm looking very much forward to um. Uh, the, Shout you know, out to Jets. I want I, I if, <laughs> depending on how they play, I really want to play a Jet. Yes. Yeah. The um the stuff that was revealed in um. CCP percents for dust. I mean, it was just, I mean, a lot of a lot of cool toys uh, down in the pipeline for sure. Okay. Well, one thing before we go to CCP presents, last thing yes. on Friday would be the uh, pub crawl. Pub crawl. Oh god. <laughs> oh my oh, god. god. Oh, that was that was so <laughs> much fun. I, I honestly would say that the pub crawl was probably the highlight of uh, of my time. Just being able to have that camaraderie with all the dusters and. Uh, I, the my favorite part, of course, was us beta testing uh, capture the flag. Uh, that uh, ended up being essentially the story behind it is pretty hilarious. We were, you know, doing our thing, walking down, and then a Capsuleer group came out and stole the flag momentarily, and then our guys ran after and got it back. And then uh, uh, Telk went up to Commander Wang's like, "We can't let this stand. This, there has to be there has to be consequences for this." And then. And Commander Wang looks at Telk a little bit and says, hmm, I don't know about this. And then, you know, Commander Ling Wang walks over, he gets on the phone, he actually uh, uh, gave us a little bit of intel on where um, um, some other flags might be located, as specifically Flags 1 and Flags 4. Uh, the dust group happened to be 
Group 5. So, uh, you better hope that Internal Affairs is not listening to this right now because they find out that CCP gave you an advantage in, in, in uh, player versus player pub crawl combat. Well, this, you see, this is going to create a, a scandal. And well, see, the thing is, in order for the beta, beta test to occur, you had to make sure that the uh, players were placed into the environment. And so Commander Wayne was just making sure that the server had been flipped off. That's all. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, so well we, we then uh, proceeded to uh, find flag one. Most people not understanding what the heck was going on. It was just like, hey, we're, we're going to go do something. And then um, uh, we're standing on the side, and me and uh, Lauren are sitting there. I was like, maybe we should try diplomacy first. <laughs> and so we walk up to him, and it happened to be a French, uh, a French uh, Eve player that was holding the flag. And Lauren then goes, oh, you know, he's talking French. He says, you know, I was trying to get to this pub, and, you know, I was then going down to this one, and then, ah! <laughs> and he latches onto the flag, and then all the Duskers come roaring across the street, ah! And, everyone, you know, half of them are drunk, and we're like, ah! And so this is pull back and forth, pull back and forth. And Lauren, like, the guy's sitting there, and he's like, ah! He's not letting go of the flag, and Lauren literally peels off the guy's fingers from the flag. Well, Lauren also took some other steps that I won't mention in order to make sure that the flag was, was liberated uh, from, from Group 1. But uh, then, you know, Flag 1 had been secured, and then, you know, we then proceeded to find Flag 4. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't get to be involved in the scrum for Flag 4, but that was successful as well. And then uh, we had, at that point, had gone to a couple more pubs, and so everyone was then, we had Flag 5, Flag 1, and Flag 4, and then this resulted in everyone chanting 514 down the streets of Reykjavik. Oh, I can never pronounce the name correct. Reykjavik. Thank you. You know, going 514. And then we had... My favorite part was the random group of local Icelanders that came up and joined us and started cheering. I can't remember the song, but it was a local, it was a local song. And they started singing the local song while we were chanting 514, 514, 514. Um, I, I think some of the flags were were uh, courteously returned back to their previous owners. Um, I think uh, I think Jinza, you guys ended up with the fl the number five five flag. In fact, I can conf I can neither confirm nor deny the, hmm. the well, you know, I, 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 I <laughs> <laughs> the question is, did, did it did it end up going to a final destination? At least it didn't. It wasn't abandoned. I hope. Oh no no no! It, it is still in Iceland. It's still in Iceland. Oh, uh, good 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 good. But it it was lost to uh, to Nat Morda thanks to a coin slot a coin toss between Nat and uh, and Nova. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But the uh, um. The other thing that was on the pub crawl was uh, drunken arm wrestling uh, for for beer tickets. That was uh, that was definitely a, an exciting moment. I had people all of a sudden there was a bunch of shouting, and I had gra was grabbing on the shoulders and then putting it and then putting a chair and <laughs> and a beer put in my hand. And I'm like, oh, what are we doing now? <laughs> and then proceeded to arm wrestle. And my God, the Zion TSHD guy that came. I, I apologize for not remembering your name. I'm sorry. I'm going to look it up, and I know you're going to have a thread about it. But but this guy was huge. I swear. I swear. He was over six feet tall. So I was like, I'm utterly screwed. So uh, won that, and then the, everyone's like, now you need to do another one. And I'm like, my arm's sore. And they're like, it doesn't matter. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty drunk now, too. So you're right. It doesn't. And then... Uh, I can't remember who it was for the second fight, but it was another... I, for some reason, they kept on finding the large guys to put in the other seat. I don't know why, but it's... All, so. the, all the CCP people fight um, um, cheated, of course. Uh, well, it, so they sit this other guy across the chair, and I'm like, well, this is all, this is all over, but uh, I finished my beer first. Well, he finished his beer first, and then he started going, and I just barely finished the beer, and I held him down for a little bit, and then... Uh, Luckily, uh, uh, you know, with arm wrestling, one of the best things you can do is you can have the other guy just wear himself out. Um, so I was sitting there, and I turned around, and I go, well, I guess I'll just pull a cane for a little bit and go AFK for a second. So I sat there holding his hand, <laughs> his hand for a bit. I was like, wait, shit, wait, shit, no, 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 still AFK. All right, all right. And then I turned to the crowd, and I go, well, everyone, do you guys think that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, rifle, the, you know, the assault rifle, should it be nerfed or buffed? 
because it's a whole crowd of dusters, of course, everyone thinks of something to their head. They're like, oh, well, I think... And they're like, ah! <laughs> and slammed his hand down. So that ended that, that uh, uh, engagement. That was the last arm wrestling that I, that I did for the evening. Um, and I had way too many beer tickets <laughs> as a result. I guess the only thing I have to say about that is on the ground we strike harder. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so true. Yes. Can't I was quite proud. I, I, I was kind of detached and bouncing around from location to location. That night. I was kind of a, a bit of a, a pub crawl whore, if you want to call it that. But, um, like, hearing some of the stories afterwards of, like, of what the Dust community, <laughs> what the, you know, that core contingent, you know, like how they just jumped into the fray and, and had a, a great time and really, you know, stood out with their shenanigans, like, made me super proud. So... It's going to be pretty epic next yeah, year, I think. Fun. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, no, I don't think you players oh, have yeah. no idea what they're what they're about to walk into. I just I can't wait for the first person to be blown up by an orbital artillery. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it'll probably be some bit of that. And the first capital ship to be blown up by an orbital artillery. The tears will will power my dropship for a long, long time. Well, I guess, you know, we've been going for over an hour and a half. We're almost coming up to two hours. Uh, CCP yes. Presents. We'll move on to CCP Presents. It was mostly Dust stuff, from what I could tell. Or a lot oh, of E-players. Oh, they're so mad about that. Yeah, Tweet no, fleet it's... blew up full of lots of angry people. Oh, and there's that's people wedding. still talking about calling the whole thing utter garbage and all this stuff. And I, I think that's just a really... Wait, I think why, it... why were they angry? Because it was because, because it was so much fest. attention on dust. There well, was there it was, was a large amount of co- dust content. There was actually, you know, there, I mean, there was more. I would say more in, dust in content than Eve content, certainly. And and it well, was ki- the kind of stuff that really probably should have been in the dust keynote. I mean, stuff like the unveiling new weapons, you know, and new equipment and stuff like isn't really going to be of interest to Eve players. I don't know that that was the wisest choice, but it was the keynote was really uh, sort of a mix between. New stuff for Dust, which is cool for us. But then the other thing was a lot of uh, marketing about the the sort of products and the the other things that they're doing marketing wise, which um, I think are pretty cool. But uh, it, it felt for a lot of like the hardcore Eve players that it, this was like a combination of the CCP selling us stuff and then CCP talking about Dust. So there's still a lot of bitterness about it. But for the universe as a whole, I think I think it was a there was a lot of good stuff revealed during that during that keynote. Yeah, the uh, very excited about Dark Horse being the choice to pick up. I, w- I was actually sitting next to Ruck Doc, and we're and we're looking at each other. We're like, "Come on, Dark Horse, right? Dark Horse. It has to be because they're like a comic." Yeah, that, that's has- exactly what I whispered to my wife. Well, I said well, it's going to be Dark Horse. Dark Horse, Dark Horse, because they're like you know, and oh, because I I'm very excited about that. And and I mean, I have the, they haven't announced a specific. Studio. I mean, they've announced the director. Of, uh, I mean, who's going to be making it, of course, but they haven't announced where who's distributing it. Like, it's not. Do we don't know if it's. I mean, whoever picks up that TV series, though, I think I'll be interested to see if it's live action or if it's done um, uh, more in the vein of how the current um, cinematics are done. Um, myself. I heard I heard it was live action, but I mean I, I I think that's just from an article I read. It could be the reporter inferring too that it was going to be live action. Yeah, I mean, it'd be but, interesting. It'd be interesting. To see. I I think well when I start when I first started playing uh, Eve um, back in two thousand five, I really did feel like Eve even at, even at those in those earlier years, Eve felt like a universe that would lend itself so well. Um, to uh, to a TV show or a movie or that sort of thing. The the to me the barrier always was how how do you get inside the pod? You know how do you convey someone being inside of a capsule in a way that's interesting uh, for TV? And I think um, if you go and watch the origins uh, trailer, which you should do, and then watch it multiple times, and then watch it in Russian because it's awesome in Russian, and then watch it in German because it's even it's cool in German too. <laughs> And the way that they did it, I think it kind of combines into what they were doing with EVR, but, you know, 
the way they represented the capsule the capsule here and you could see the emotions you know as they were going through and fighting and dying and stuff i this i'm i'm really excited about where they can go uh, with that kind of media cuz i i mean to me having that kind of resource i mean people may say wonder you know oh is it is it worth developing you know but it, the thing is ccp as they said before they're finding experts to go out into these areas so I mean, I which is think super classy and, and and super reflective of the fact that, uh, and I think I don't think people realize how much attention CCP put on this, but they're they've been very very careful this year, and this this part of this I know this because of being under NDA and knowing what what their you know short or near term future plans are, and, and and knowing about what they could have done for Odyssey that they didn't that they will likely do now in the in the winter expansion, but. Uh, CCP is very, very careful these days to to only put up and talk about stuff, especially in the wake of like the modular pause, uh, you know, debacle and all that. Uh, they're they're very, very careful to only talk about stuff that they know with you know without a shadow of a doubt they can actually pull off and pull off not like someday, but like pull off in the next year or two. And so I think this is by far though, even though there was a lot of crazy ambitious stuff that we saw in, in over those three days. Um, I think this is by far one of the the most grounded and and realistic uh, sort of unveiling of of what they what they can possibly do, and that to me is really encouraging. and And I don't know that that necessarily everybody picked up on that, but certainly from what I've you know seen working with them the past year, I was blown away by the the but what they were able to to talk about, but that like I never once got the idea in any of the three keynotes that like oh this is never going to happen like oh that's just an idea and they're you know I mean everything that they presented was grounded in something that they've done a really practical assessment of their studio their 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 their, uh, their staff their you know and how long it takes for them to do various features so I think that's a really positive step forward from this. Uh, anything more to say about the uh, CCP presents before I go into some questions? Uh, Just also, I, I, I really, wa I really, really, really want want to, uh, uh, to to jump into those jets so much. Jets are one of the things I'm really, really <laughs> waiting for. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, yeah, seeing some of the new the new equipment that was going to be unveiled was, was certainly awesome as a Dust player, and, and part of why I'm obviously biased about the the final keynote and and not as bitter as many of the E players are about it. Um, you know, knowing that there's going to be a Kaldari and Mimitar heavy relatively oh. soon, so that I don't have and to Glente. lug around this armor crap. You know, and Glente. the Glente yeah. one looks the best by far. Yeah, I just I I love the the Type Two shield setup um, currently, and and I can't wait to have another more mobile heavy suit. But to me, the, really the most emotional part of the whole three days was was hearing them talk about the Dark Horse comics and hearing them talk about the movie. Because uh, when I ran for CSM a year ago, the, I was asked by a, a, a player that was really into role-playing uh, what I thought about story in the EV universe. And I, and I wrote this post uh, that I talked about, you know, I mentioned the never-ending story and the fact that Bastion, you know, you know, picks up this book from a bookstore and he reads it and he kind of falls into this fantasy universe that by the end of the, the movie is is uh, now invading his own real world. And that sort of feedback loop of what fi what's fiction, what's nonfiction, what's, you know, imagination versus reality, that kind of thing just really, really, I find really inspiring and groundbreaking. And so part of what I wrote in this post was that, you know, they were asking me about the Eve novels, and I said, well, they're, you know, the Eve novels to a role player is kind of like a theme park sort of deal. Like, it's not a sandbox for a role player in that they're telling you exactly which factions are doing what. They're telling you, you know, what 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 characters are being assassinated or, or not or rising to power. And, and it's very forced for a, a role play universe that, that supports player choice and, and player driven narratives. And so... You know, I wrote at the time that that, and not that any of these ideas or or things we saw at the keynote were were my responsibility, but I wrote at the time that I I thought it was a wasted opportunity to write novels about stock lore when they could write novels about some of the things that have happened within the Eve universe. You know, the, the fall of Band of Brothers, the disbanding, um, or or stuff more recently like uh you know Aharm and Rooks and Kings battling over uh over uh, Nova, their their home wormhole system, using you know the 
crazy infinite gun, like, and how the CSM was involved in that story. Like, th these are really powerful narratives that I think are, are every bit is worth capturing in, a, in whether it's a novel or or something else. I I had written about novels at the time because that was the that was the biggest outside of the universe media that that CCP had experimented with. But uh, you know, never in 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 a million years. Did I think that a year later we would be seeing the, the unveiling of a of a comic book and a TV show doing exactly what I wanted them to do with with books? And I think once we have this, where somebody can go in a in a, a bookstore or or turn on their TV and and watch or read about or learn about the yes. you know New Eden, and then become part of that world and then realize that the actions that they you know, take while being part of that world could be the next yes. book that's on the show for the next TV episode is 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 groundbreaking. And it's to me, it's no longer about spaceships. It's about like art itself and storytelling itself. And I think CCP has got something here that that nobody else has in terms of you know interactive storytelling. And yes, definitely. You know that to me is why I'm I'm so invested in the, the company and so invested in in both games and uh and there's there's just no one else doing anything else like it, so no. that was really emotional to see that because it was this has been one of my dreams from the beginning. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's I've never been more proud to be part of the New Eden universe. I, I mean, to exactly. me, I mean every every single presentation to me was very was a, just an emotional experience. I mean, the from you know the idea of building our own stargates. I mean to uh, then being having our stories be something that uh, you know people out in the world that never have heard of New Eden at all could then you know pick up and read. I mean, just every every facet of it just seemed to gel so well. Um, I mean, I was a total I, cry baby. Yeah, that was teary at parts and dabbing to, away joy. To, <laughs> to me, the future for New Eden has never looked brighter. But that doesn't mean that there's not going to be work to do and bumps down the road. Uh, but I just think now that we have – that there's just a concrete vision for the future, um, I, I really think that nothing – I don't think there's going to be any obstacle that's going to come our way that's going to be insurmountable. I think we will get through this time, tough times, you know? I mean, I don't think there's anything that's going to be stopped – that could really stop. This time that last year, there was a serious debate was as to whether or not Dust was going to be a flop and whether all this money that, that CCB put into, into opening another studio and building a second game was going to be disastrous and, and potentially drag EVE down with it. This was a very serious fear amongst EVE players all last year that, that Dust was going to be the Icarus you know, that, that melted the minute they got close to the sun and, and took everything down with it. And... I think what we've seen is is the polar opposite of that. We've seen them by reaching out and tackling something as ambitious as dust and and, and realizing that vision. They've actually made this a much stronger uh, set of you know intellectual property as a whole. And I, I think both games are are in a much stronger position, uh, you know, competitively in the long run because they have each other and this combined universe. Than if they either one stood on their own. Yes. Definitely. I mean, just like you, as you saw in the Dust keynote, you know, the line between the games just remo over time removing that line. I mean, you know, it needs to be done in a cautious way, um, you know, in, in a mutually beneficial way. But blending, making these games connected is what makes is going to make these games successful, I think, in the long run. And it's going to what going to be what makes them unique. I mean, I don't really have any questions now. You pretty much covered everything. Although I am disappointed Hans didn't mention Galente winning the war. But... So they put oh, a lot... oh, the mentioning faction or winning faction war. Yeah, we took all. Was it 100 systems or 101 systems? Oh. Well, I wasn't trying to go too much into to Eve related, but I, you know, uh, Eve related stuff specifically because isn't this a more or less a dust? Yeah, although I'm mostly just saying that because I was involved in that, but. <laughs> well, <laughs> congratulations, sir. You you've earned it. You earned your medal. Yep. So oh, it's a nice medal. No, that was the other reason I was emotional during all of this is because there's it, it you know seeing the graphs on the screen and hearing and hearing all the stories around FanFest of people 
uh, talk about faction warfare, and, and it's alive again, and it's alive and kicking, and, and people are, are, are killing each other faster than ever before. And that, to me, was also incredibly emotional because that's what I've worked my ass off the last year to make sure that it was done right. And, and you know, I've been one of the people that's been an outspoken advocate for this, what used to be a niche, you know, area of the game that, that used to be sort of a, the butt of a lot of, of people's jokes. And to transform it from, from that, this stale, outdated, neglected system that a lot of people were making fun of those who participated in it, to all of a sudden this thing that's, you know, popular and hip and cool and, and exciting and, and generates activity and conflict and drama just, you know, is, you know, everything that, that I knew it ha could be if it was done well. And so to sort of like see the proof of that at the end of a year's worth of work was also really sort of cathartic for me. Well, I think that's everything for CCP Presents. Uh, I guess those I'm seeing on the notes someone added this CSM and CPM joint meeting. We actually, yeah, you actually, we actually touched that earlier in the show. Um, yeah. The CPM meeting that we discussed earlier actually ended up dovetailing into the CPM joint CSM meeting. Well, and we didn't have like a formal meeting on Thursday necessarily, other than sort of just us gathering when we were rehearsing no. for the thing. And so the only the only real official business sort of meeting we had while we were there you know, was on Sunday after yes. Fest that evening, and that was that was the combined one that we had with with CSM. So all the the, the talk earlier about the signing the NDAs and and uh, sort of orienting ourselves with the company and how we're going to be communicating, you know, that sort of thing was was uh, the sort of conversation that took place after FanFest was over. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I've put the eSports roundtable on. I don't know if anybody actually got to go to that, and that's more of a... I didn't, unfortunately. Uh, like, just something I'm interested in personally, but... Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to... Use. Yeah. It was actually meant to... I think the tournament ran into when it should have been, because the <laughs> tournament ran a bit late. <laughs> Which, the irony you know, of yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you think you think they would put the the esports panel to make sure that it lands after <laughs> one all. of the tournaments, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like I, said, I I had to miss the faction warfare roundtable because I was on a CSM panel, and that was that was kind of one of the sucky moments about FanFest was knowing that there was like all of my people were in a room talking about faction warfare, and I couldn't be there with them, you know, so. There's just too much to do. I'm I'm looking forward to coming back in a year as purely as a as an attendee without any of these uh, responsibilities and just getting to like join all of the various sessions that I would want to for my own personal interest rather than the stuff that I you know had to do for you know quote unquote work <laughs> though though none of this ever really felt like work you know it was, it was a lot fun. of fun it was there's a lot of fun yeah so much fun cool um. We've still got a bit of time, actually. Like we've only been recording for about an hour and forty minutes. I'd estimate at this only, time. Only, only. I thought you were you're shooting for an hour and a half. Oh uh, well, I mean it's post fan fest, and there's only a couple of things left to talk about. No, I mean, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm just I'm just messing. <laughs> you go through and edit, edit all this, or do you throw it up raw? Uh, well, I have to edit it now because we yeah. stopped recording a couple of times. But um, I guess <laughs> while we're on the like uh topic of faction warfare they put up a dev blog for how faction warfare is going to work in the future and i'm a little uh i think it isn't very good personally i don't know what hans thinks about it it's it's incomplete at the moment i mean obviously i think well it tackles one big problem and that's that the the kind of coordination that that is required and <laughs> Is is just insanely brutally, you know, painful uh, in order to, you know, get Dust Corporations and Eve Corporations working together in the same place at the same time for the same system flip. It requires a lot of of, you know, and me and Kane worked together on this uh, towards the very beginning when we were trying to, you know, figure out how this all worked, you know, in terms yeah. of. It, it, it took people like spreadsheeting, and, and my own corp, Delta Force Superman's done the same thing, where he's you know been really good at uh, spreadsheeting out you know who, which districts are under controlled by whom and how many districts are owned on each planet, and, and being able to track that so that 
uh, Delta Force could be of service to faction work for pilots, but it's been incredibly difficult to get off the ground. It's certainly not something that's accessible enough that, um, you know, that, that even just the bread and butter stuff like uh, orbital bombardment, which should be like, you know, in my in my opinion, should be really accessible to, to both EVE players and Dust players alike. Um, is so it's so arcane at the moment that uh, yeah, it, you know, it's, it goes really underutilized, and it's a, it's a huge novelty right now when you actually get enough Dust Mercs working together with a coordinated system flip where where you can lower that threshold. It's only happened a few times where the Dust Mercs have really come into play strategically, and. Uh, it's it's a big wasted opportunity. So does this new mechanic of of the auto spawning uh, dust matches, you know, pairing it up with uh, where people are plexing in space, does it solve a big problem there? Certainly. And and the what's what's going to happen now is that Eve players are probably going to be unprepared for it. They're probably going to be blindsided by it, and they're probably going to be angry <laughs> when they when they you know at least for the initial learning curve till they realize, hey, you know, these dust mercs are going to affect our uh, you know, efforts in space, whether we like it or not. So we can either ignore them and and fight an uphill battle that we shouldn't, ha- you know, don't have to, or we're going to find out who, you know, which dust mercs are participating or which corps are fighting, and we're going to make some deals and, and create some relationships and and realize that they're going to be there whenever we make a system push, whether we want them to or not. So we might as well set up cooperative relationships and take advantage of that. So that that aspect of it I'm I'm pretty optimistic about. I think it's I think it's uh uh worth trying and seeing how it works. Uh but but the the system as a whole is still incomplete. The reward element of it is a is a huge uh, disappointment for it not to be uh enabled from the the very beginning because right now there's no incentive for people to do uh a a faction warfare match versus any other instant battle. So, is is it going to bring the best and the brightest of of the dust troops you know, into faction warfare and and make that a more premier elite uh, competitive environment than regular public matches? No, I mean, yeah, not in, well, not in the short term. And well, actually, well, one thing that I've been planning for it um, for the new revamped uh, faction warfare system is that uh, well, back uh, back in in many builds ago when um, how, how the inst- well there was no instant battle per se there was just a list of servers and you'd basically jump to jump into one server and that was pretty much there was like the EU server and, and the uh, an American server and the Asian server so what our corporation would do is that without having any squads set up we'd all pile in to one server usually the most um, unpopulated one and then do like loads of training matches, and with the new system, we're actually planning to do that. <laughs> well, I just hope that. Uh, oh, I think that's. I mean, I'm definitely going to see. You're definitely going to probably see corporations doing that. But at the same time, um, I'd hate to end up in the long run with situations similar to what we had before, where um, players were duking it out on a server in a test match and actually flipping districts, not realizing that they were actually impacting Eve players. I think that definitely was kind of a sore spot that dusters didn't even realize that the corporation matches were actually causing things to happen in the realm of Eve. It's no big deal to us, John. It's just, it doesn't really matter to us. It's to win or lose, it, well, it matters to win. But you know, you know, you know well, I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it matters. But it doesn't matter in the same way as it does the poor Eve people. I mean, I guess my biggest problem though is that we can have the off like a. It almost benefits your side on Eve if to let the other side on Dust win. And I know Hans will understand like the whole like you can farm more without actually hitting that 100% contested thing because if it takes longer to flip a system, then you can get more LP. Yeah, I mean that system. That was a big fear that I think people had going into faction warfare. I don't. I don't think in the long run it's played out as much. I mean, because right now the way that they, I mean, during the first you know, sort of in between in, Inferno uh, and Retribution, that was a, a pretty significant issue. But I think, especially since uh, Retribution um, has launched, there's there's so much more tangible reward to actually owning that system than to farm it. That uh, except for in a few edge cases, um, you still want to take all the space and own all the space, and then and then at that point, plexing is a is a 
you know, inefficient method of gaining LP compared to doing missions at that point. And you can do missions, you know, whether you, um, you know, whether the enemy has uh, space for you to farm or not. So, uh, you know, I think I'm pretty satisfied with, with how that goes. I don't know that, that we're necessarily going to see people not fighting optimally for it. I'm, I'm much more concerned with the, you know, lack of reward for participation in faction warfare on the dust side. I mean, to me, there should be, you know, to me, the, like, it, it's silly to not have the dust uh, mercenaries or, like having the same tiered benefits that the that yeah. the rest of the militia does, it, and if, it, if if people are going to actually engage in faction warfare and, and and pick a side and be loyal and be rewarded for being loyal, then yeah. that relationship should be one that 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 they benefit uh, when when we raise a tier and people start getting more money. You know, the the faction warfare payouts for the loyalists uh, should go up as well for for dust mercs. Yeah. So I think that that whole component that's missing from this first pass. Is is its biggest weak spot and where we're going to run into the most problems. I I think, you know, I think there should have been some kind of a, a reward system in place before that switch occurred. But you know, or even because what we're back to is is arbitrary relationships, right? We're back to, um, yeah. you know, people you know working together because it's the, the like the possibility exists, not because there's any financial incentive for people yeah. to do so. Yeah. Because especially without any kind of is transfer, you know, those of us in in that play Eve on faction warfare, we we can't even pay these guys, you know, to help us, you know, yeah. at, at that basic level of of motivating them to to work together. And 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 this both of these games are so grounded in income and isk and and a capitalist sort of uh, motivation driving them that it, it's until that is there, until there's like a a real reason for us to pay. Uh, and, and the ability for us to pay mercs, or just an intrinsic benefit for them to fight for us. Yeah, uh, it's going to be incredibly hard to motivate people to to form those complex interdependent relationships. And so that's just something that I hope CCP gets on right away and and doesn't shy away from. Like I'm going to be just as outspoken for them taking care of faction warfare in Dust as I have in Eve. And right now. The dust side is is the the unhealthy component in terms of where faction warfare is at. So yeah, uh, it's you know it's they, not much. They chose well in bringing me on board because, uh, you know, this will be something I can uh, I can speak to based on experience. Yeah, I mean, because because right now it I mean it's just it seems like faction warfare is going to be just a little bit more organized pickup groups. In all honesty, um, yep. I I mean and. There's so much more that you can do with it than that. Well, I'm sure they'll iterate on it a lot, and I'm sure. Well, you sound like you want to really push them to actually get it right. Yep, absolutely. So that'll be something we'll see. Hopefully, next six months, next expansion, I guess. Yeah. I'm hoping like next patch after after Uprising, you know, like it's something, you know, give us. Uh, they, they mentioned in their, one of their forum posts that they they're shying away from the idea of LP, which to me is kind of like asinine. Like I don't I don't understand what they're afraid of yeah. in terms of uh, us being like it being too complicated. Like I mean, come on, like this is this is one of the most complex you know universes that that exists in gaming, and and the you know crowd that's attracted to Eve, and I, and I think the crowd that will in the long run stick around in Dust are going to be some of the smartest people out there in gaming. And like having three yeah. currencies versus two is to me an incredibly weak argument not to use LP and an yeah. LP store, which would be like a great way to yeah. you can dole out these rewards to to Dust Mercs that participate. You can scale the LP rewards based on the tier level the exact same way they've already got it working so healthily in in a in Eve, and, and you've got you've got this robust market interface set up for Dust already. Like it's yeah. just it's a, it, to me that's a no-brainer sort of thing to experiment with. And it, I'm a little alarmed by the fact that uh, they're already saying no, we're not going to go there with LP. So it'll definitely be a conversation that I'm going to be following up on them about that uh, because I you know if they're not going to do LP, then I'm, I'm you know, really, really curious what they are thinking about doing because 
if it's just like another like a, a randomized but slightly better loot drop or it, like it, to me it becomes too abstract for for things that yeah. for relationships to be formed around and that's my interest in this uh, design wise is that um, whatever this reward system is that they build in it has to be something where there's a direct reason for for dust mercs to form relationships and with a tiered L lp store at least then there's an incentive for dust uh, mercs to pick a side and to stick with that side and then to mm -hmm. make sure that they have the space side support that they need for both teams to be successful in working together um, so i'm super curious as to what ccp is toying with in their in their skunk works if if not an lp store because that to me is the the obvious first step Yeah, I mean, I agree, like, loyalty points. I mean, if you look at something like even World of Warcraft, like, that's one of the most popular MMOs out there, and that has something like 100 currencies now, or something ridiculous like that, and people yeah, still yeah. are able to follow that, so... I really don't think that we need to, like, coddle, even... I mean, even though there's there's a different crowd and a different type of player, um, and, and maybe even arguably demographically, it, may pop, it could be a younger audience that, they, that, that comes plays shooters versus a game like Eve, but I, I think that's all pretty, you know, irrelevant in terms of us not being able to handle a third currency when, if there's, you know, enough other compelling game design reasons for having one, uh, yeah, it absolutely. just seems kind of weak, and I'm, that, that kind of caught me by surprise here in the last couple of days that they would announce that they're definitely not thinking about that right now. So, something to, something to follow up on, and I'm glad we got a, a system in place like the CPM where we can... Uh, where we can have those conversations, you know, uh, without, you know, NDAs or anything getting in the way. Yeah, definitely. And it's easily one of the most thing, well, most complained about things I've seen recently is that faction warfare needs rewards. So I'm glad to like hear that you're all actually wanting to. Yeah, you can't, oh, that's that. what I, that's what I worked the whole last year to do for Eve. I mean, that was the problem before is that that we could do system flips all day long, and there was absolutely no financial incentive to do so. There was literally yes. like, I mean, no, nothing that could be gained by winning, and and nothing that could be gained in the process of of all that work that it took to flip systems. And that was why faction warfare was dead, and that's why it was, you know continued to, to fail to live up to its potential. And once they came up with a robust, you know, scaling reward system that's based on success, the, the whole system blew up. And, you know, they're going to have to do that for, for Dust early on here, or else it will likewise uh, become a stale, underused, uh, you know, sort of gameplay form. Yeah. So, too many lessons from the last year that they, that they need to apply at this from the very beginning. Okay. Um, just trying to think about what else. I mean, there is the whole... There was a dev blog that came out, although I haven't actually got a good format for the spreadsheet because they actually released it in a spreadsheet format and I don't have Excel on this PC. Yeah, if you... Yeah, if you, um, you can actually use... Uh, for people who are needing to open up, it's a comma-separated value uh, file. You can actually use Google Docs. Uh, or Google Drive as it is now to open up that um, and import that spreadsheet in a more manageable fashion. Um, the reason they went with the CSV, you know, that uh, CSV is more universally. Oh, you can, you can, if it's were an Excel spreadsheet, you'd be limited to Microsoft. But that CSV, you can open it up with a lots of different file formats. I mean, uh, programs, as it were. Yeah, but I mean, I think I, if I'm gonna talk about that, I'd rather talk about it after everybody's actually played with. Everything. I mean, like we can speculate all we want right now, but yeah, until we actually get our hands on it, I feel like there isn't that much to talk about as re in regards to that. Uh, I guess that's it, really. Yeah. So just like Fanfest was great, and Fanfest was great, and lots of cool CPM stuff that you'll actually be doing. And uh, oh yeah, I was going to announce Frontlines, but you guys pushed. Planetary Conquest back a week, so I'll do that next week instead. Yes. Uh, damn it, Kane. <laughs> hey, more time for you to organize your stuff together. Now that you've now that you've potentially found a place to broadcast it from, I guess. or two, anyways. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess that's it. 
thanks everybody for coming on. Um, I don't know who we're going to have on next week. I mean, maybe Danny, because he's going to a Newcastle meet, which is in like five days, which uh, I unfortunately can't go to, but oh well. And yeah, yeah. First fan fest, and then you can't go to the... Come on now. Oh, it's <laughs> they do it in the middle of a week, in the, of the week <laughs> at night. So, oh, if it was during the day, I could go. And if it was on the weekend, I could go. But I can't go... Oh, well. <laughs> I'll get to meet Falcon some other time. So weird. It's annoying because they're like a hundred miles away. Oh well. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess if, if anyone is actually wondering. No, go ahead. Yeah, and if any, hello, if you can hear me. Oh, yeah, I can damn. hear you. Oh, good. Yeah, if anyone is actually wondering, I am indeed wearing the hippie trousers. <laughs> Those were a hit. Hey, they got very those mixed. The, those reviews. were the yeah, those were the talk of the town. They got the very keynote. mixed reviews on on the on the Twitch comments. I mean, some of them were saying that they're horrible, absolutely terrible. Some people thought they're wondrous, and some people insisted that they should be made into in-game clothing assets. <laughs> Eve is real, <laughs> indeed. Okay, final thoughts. Uh, we'll start with Jenza. Final thoughts and shout outs and all that. Well, shout outs to Kona. Um, shout out uh, to the court and my final thoughts on the matter is that uh, this is really the first time soon as planetary conquest that we ever we'll, we'll ever actually get to what's truly meant as a as an influential system I mean ever since now I guess you could argue that factional warfare is in, in, impacting but it never really felt it because we never had an interface to really show it um, but with the new system the whole idea that the get the matches are persistent and then these games mean actually mean things will finally take place and that's the main reason that I first got into Dust because uh, I wasn't never really very much into the whole play a game, do some stuff, play a game, do some stuff and I cannot wait to see where things spread from here. Okay, uh, Hans, final thoughts and shout outs. Sure, I'll give a, a shout out to uh, Delta Force, of course, and uh, to my CEO Superman, who's uh, just doing an awesome job getting getting everybody in the crew ready for for uh, Planetary Conquest, and uh, and it's it's been fun to sort of uh, watch it all come together. And uh, in general, I just want to thank thank everybody that's that's been involved in the Bay of the last year. Like, I mean, it you know, I, I do not disagree at all when with Mittens when he comes on and says. You know that this game was basically a tech demo for the last year. That's the exact like language that I used with CCP at the at the summit. And um, you know to see it come from from where we were in December to where we where we're at today with with Uprising is is just absolutely incredible. And, um, and, and but what's what's really what we should take away from that is that most of the stuff that's in Uprising is like the the top hit list of stuff that that everyone that's that you know, you know, regardless of the delivery, everyone on the forums and everyone that's that's been given the feedback, uh, that's we're seeing the fruit of that uh, directly. And so it's like I couldn't be more excited to to get to uh, be on the CPM where now I can focus all of my time on on Dust, uh, both as a player um, and in terms of working with CCP, that I can really zero in on what I personally think is one of the more exciting uh, projects to work on because. Of where it's at developmentally. So, uh, thank you for everyone that's that's been patient through crappy build after crappy build, <laughs> and and you know through all of the naysaying and the the doomsday sort of you know shit that we've dealt with. Uh, yeah. We've we we've, we've come a long long way and and really achieved something. So, and it, it, we couldn't have done that if people hadn't stuck it out. So, thanks to everyone that's been playing Dust the last year. And uh. Crap, Kane. <laughs> we never see each other ever, you know. <laughs> oh, I would just like to give a shout out to all the um to negative feedback and um especially uh to the guys that trekked out to FanFest though. Um Regnum, fuck, awesome performance in the uh in the tourney finals and, and Telk as well and Wombat in Combat. So congratulations on um on that victory um in doing first place in the tourney finals. And Wombat, thank you so much for showing us around on your to your country. Iceland is awesome. 
I'm gonna come back. I owe, you owe me a trip to to those hot the hot springs and stuff. So don't think I'll forget it. And um, also just out to to everyone uh, that I met at uh, Fan Fest. It was just an absolutely fantastic experience. Uh, shout out to the Intake Liberation Front. I actually got to to meet uh, their leader as well. So it was just an all round awesome awesome experience, and I hope to do it again. Okay. I'd like to give a shout out to Google Hangout for not breaking and being reliable. <laughs> yes. We may well actually switch to this from Skype because it's free and way more stable. Like I've not seen any real blur or any like major audio issues nope, so far. No, nope, it's been crystal clear the whole time. Yeah. Huh. Free and better. Yeah, huh. and it has inbuilt <laughs> streaming as well, so I could do this live potentially. Um, Good day. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. With a we all have that audience. in our mouth about <laughs> Skype, anyways. After uh, Darius three, so you know, just feels dirty. Yeah, I mean, the reason I actually stopped using it, well, aside from the fact that they put loads of random noises in, was uh, bloop. Bloop. yeah, but there was all <laughs> sorts of other like twinkle sounds and other stuff as well. Um, every hour it would come up with "Are you AFK?" and if you didn't click it, then uh, it would just like, cl- just... It would just close the window. <laughs> oh, and also, there's lots of cool apps. So, I might actually just start using Google Hangout again. Some people were saying I should. So, yeah, seems to be working well. Hello. Oh, I like your crown. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that <It's> crown. <laughs> oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in and watching. Uh, we'll be back next week. We'll be doing this weekly. Uh, I know we missed the week because of FanFest, and uh, I'm sorry about last week's show. I blame Kane. <laughs> Where's my cat? I need my cat back. Where the hell do you get these special, hats? Special How, guess. Is there a Google button? Effect. Google oh, effect. snap. <laughs> yeah, you uh, see, you're going to have to use your webcam now, Hans. There you go. Yeah, oh, Hans yeah, will I have to get a webcam, own, but yeah, we'll be back next week. Thanks, uh, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, enjoy Uprising and try not to whine so much. 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 To whine so much.